Hello there. The video you're about to see, we had some technical difficulties and the video itself is blurry but the audio is perfect. So thanks for understanding and enjoy the video. God bless. Hello and welcome to Safe Pastures YouTube. I'm beginning a new based on Psalm 46, very present help in church. I'm so glad you could join study is um, all the way through it's only and then I would like to give you the context of writing this um, and it, I don't know several years ago the Lord told me to commit this psalm to memory and it has been such a comfort for me in my trials and tribulations, just the different things we all go through in life. But I found such comfort in this psalm. And I know that the Holy Spirit's been directing me that this is the time to bring out a study on this very helpful uh, psalm in the times, the crazy world we live in. So I would like to begin with reading the entire psalm. And at the beginning in verse 1, it says to the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a song upon Alamoth. Here we go. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of our God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. Kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He makes wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now we're going to go through verse by verse and explore at least some of the depths. I mean, just like all scripture, there's so many layers. But I just want to share with you some of the insights the Holy Spirit's given me over the years, and even now, I, I, I actually go over the psalm every single day because it keeps me on that solid rock of, of faith and trust in God. I would like to start out with, though, talking about the, the man who wrote this psalm. There's been some speculation among commentators, and a lot of people speculate that it was David and it was about one of his victories. But I was very intrigued when I read what E.W. Bullinger had to say. He said that there's no other period in time that suits this, but that of King Hezekiah's defense of Israel against Sennacherib's siege of Jerusalem. So Sennacherib was king of Assyria, and he was, um, he was p placing a siege against Jerusalem. And what had happened was Sennacherib's father, Sargon, king of Syria, had died. And before he died, Jerusalem, I mean, the, the kingdom of Judah, had been a vassal state, a vassal nation under Sargon. In other words, they paid tribute for um, Sargon not to attack them. They just had to keep these kind of these peace offerings. And I think it was pretty expensive. Anyway, so Sargon dies. And in the political upheaval that commenced at the, at the death of Sargon, Hezekiah rebelled against being a vassal state and paying tribute. So when Sennacherib took power, he said, no, you are not going to do that. You're not going to rebel. So then he laid siege to Jerusalem. And that is the context of this psalm. And it all makes sense. We will get into the nitty-gritty of what was going on with the Assyrian troops 
and Hezekiah and, and Jerusalem during that time. So I want to start with verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, very present help in trouble. I, re- I wrote that, that verse to read this way. This is what Bullinger put into the verse to help you understand the Hebrew context. God is our refuge to which one flees, a refuge that one flees to, and strength, a very present, which means this help is found near to this person in trouble. Maybe that'll make a little more sense as we go into some of the Hebrew meanings, but the word refuge, which is number 4268 in Strong's in the Hebrew, it literally means a refuge or shelter. It reminds me of when I was reading a book. If you haven't read this book, you need to read this. I've read it several times in my life, and it's a wonderful allegory, just like Pilgrim's Progress, another classic allegory of the Christian walk. But it's called Hind's Feet on High Places. And it's very similar. Instead of Christian, the main character is a girl named Much Afraid and her experience getting to know the Good Shepherd. But at one point, she's with the helpers that the shepherd had appointed her on this very rugged, dangerous, treacherous journey that she had to make. And it's, it's the journey is the spiritual walk. But she's on this mountainside and this huge storm. It's nighttime. There's a huge windstorm. There's rain. There's trees crashing around them. So they are desperate to find a shelter from this storm. And at one point, they find kind of this jutting, you know, this outcropping of rock, kind of like a, a small cave. And they, they climb into this little shelter and they they the rest of the storm they see trees falling over you know everything's going bad but they are safe and you know it struck me as I was thinking about this verse that not only were they safe in the shelter they had refuge but they were completely surrounded by solid rock as you would be in a cave So the refuge was strong. And that brings me to the next word, Strong's Hebrew 5797 for the word strength. It means might. So God is our, he's not only a refuge keeping us out of the storm, but he is this strength and this might. You know, we have no strength in and of ourselves. The scripture says, that when I'm weak, then I'm strong. When we realize our own weakness and our powerlessness to protect ourselves, to have strength to to do anything, and when we cast ourselves on the Lord, then He empowers us. He gives strength. You know, it says that God opposes the proud, but He gives grace, which is one of the aspects of grace is strength. But He gives grace and strength to the humble. So when we, when God is our very present, you know, he is our refuge and our strength. He is our rock. This the, in, in, another place in scripture, it says, there is no God like our God. There is no rock like our rock. He is the rock. He is stable. He is not changing. And, and so when I, when I, Think about that scene out of um, Hind's Feet on High Places. It's just such a picture of who God is to us. You know, this verse also takes me back to Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, it said, and then it goes on and says, And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. And then it goes on. I could go on into Psalm 91, but I'll stick to Psalm 40, 46 right now. But I'm sure Psalm 91 will come into play very soon. Anyway, you know, again, this harkens back to Psalm 91 that God has a secret place. He's got a place for us. Those of us that say, you know what, God, I, 
I am submitting my life to you. I am turning away from sin. I, I am grieved with what my sin has done for you. And I'm throwing, you know, I'm throwing myself on your mercy. I'm asking you for mercy. I'm turning away from my sin. And I, I want to serve you with my life. God grants us admission into his presence, into the holy of holies. I mean, he is actually willing to let us come into his presence and abide in him if we humble ourselves and submit to his dominion in our lives. You know, if we abide in him, Jesus said in, <clears throat> excuse me, in John 15, that if we abide in him and his word abides in us, then we will have whatever we ask for in prayer. And that, that sounds like, woohoo, you know, get what I want. But see, the, the condition there is if we abide in him and his word abides in us. And the word abide means we don't just visit once in a while. You know, where you live, where you get your mail, that's where you abide. You don't abide in a, in a hotel that you're staying at for the weekend. That's not where you get your mail, where you abide, where you're there day after day after day. That's where you live. That's what he said. If we abide in him and his word abides in us and his word is, um, is accepted by us, it's embraced. That's we're living his word. Well, then he said, you ask whatever you will. And it will be given to you because we'll be asking according to his will, like it says in 1 John. You know, being also, we talked about in Psalm 91, verse 1, if we abide in him and his word abides in us, then we are allowed to abide under his shadow, like in Psalm 91. And being in the shadow of anyone means that you're in close proximity to them. So when we abide under the shadow of the Almighty and He is our refuge, then we are very close to Him. He is our refuge and our strength. Psalm 46.1 says, We have no strength, like I just said. We have no strength in ourselves. We obviously need protection from those things that would try to destroy or harm us. Remember, we live in a fallen world. When sin entered this world, this world was just turned upside down. And it is, a, it is a frightening, scary place to live. There's death and destruction. There's things that want to harm us. There's forces in this world that are much too strong for us. You know, in Ephesians, it talks about that we don't war against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. I mean, without God, we are powerless. We are nothing. Those things would overpower us. We are no match for the powers of wickedness. But when God has been given the supremacy in our hearts, when we say, God, you are in charge of this life. I am your servant. I am submitting to everything you tell me to do then God sends his spirit to live inside of us. And then it says, I think it's in, <clears throat> I think it's in first John. It says, he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. See, so you, you see, Jesus defeated all of those spiritual wickedness in high places, all those wicked, powerful forces. He defeated them at the cross. And when he sent his spirit it, to live in our hearts, and, the, you know, when he sent his spirit that first time Pentecost into the hearts of his believers, then the devil was no match for those who walk in faith because it's the Holy Spirit. It's God. God can overpower the devil. There is no question. So, anyway, I just want to encourage you that we have... God is our refuge and our strength, our very present help in trouble. He is not looking at the news, scratching his head, saying, I don't know what we're going to do. I didn't know this was going to happen. No, God ha had a plan from the foundation of the world. And he's just looking for us to come and put our trust in him 
and and cast it says we cast our care upon him because he cares for us that's what God wants us to do he wants to be our refuge and strength he is involved in what is going on you know the deists they believe that god created the world and wound it up like a watch and and just walked away and he's just letting it tick out its time but that's not the god that's not god how he revealed himself in in the word he is highly involved in the affairs of of men and he wants to be our refuge and our strength he delights to help us i mean the word says it jesus ever lives to make intercession for us so take heart and know that god he wants to be your strength and your refuge and your very present help in the trouble of our days and uh look, looks like i need to end it here so um i hope you can join us next time we will delve into verse two and that's going to be an interesting study about fear about what how god sees us and and what what he expects of us where fear is concerned i hope you've enjoyed this study and if you found it helpful if you know anyone that can use this message of encouragement please share this out Thank you again, and I hope to see you next time.